All right. Uh, thank you for joining today. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, today I'd like to talk about uh, hands-on with Terraform module for AWS Landing Zone. Right? And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this Landing Zone, uh, two years ago, Amazon launched a solution uh, called AWS Landing Zone, which is a secure multi-account strategy, how to manage it. And here's the link. Um, and um, so the landing zone, it's, a, it's actually a much broader solution, but this is the core architecture, how to take a couple of your accounts and what kind of use cases to put in those accounts. Um, it was uh, very well received and so successful that uh, a, a year later, Amazon announced and launched a service that which is part of their offering uh, AWS uh, Control Tower which is literally the landing zone as a service. It runs on underneath the AWS landing zone solution. And it's a service that helps customers to uh, set up and govern uh, secure multi-account AWS environments in uh, their organizations. Right? Um, and uh, to transition a little bit from the landing zone to control tower, uh, this is pretty much the similar architecture uh, the same picture, just the different colors and the background uh, uh, and the uh, icons, right? But uh, added uh, the, uh, everything that uh, converts around control tower as an uh, orchestration service and what it touches and uh, what goes where, right? So um, uh, we've worked with a couple of customers um, that uh, they are large enterprises and uh, we identified, or customers actually identified while working with them, uh, several issues that they had with this uh, solution. Like the first one is, although the AWS SSO is, uh, uh, is great, it's free service, uh, you can use it in your uh, account setup. Um, they already have existing uh, uh, solutions for single sign-on, like. Uh, Azure AD or Okta or Thin Identity, and uh, the solution doesn't support a very easily implementation or integration with those services. Uh, another feedback that we've got from customers is, um, so, although it was recently introduced in the cloud formation that you can import existing resources, the landing zone solution uh, didn't support that if you have an existing uh, SSO or you have an existing database organization, uh, that's, that's pretty, pretty difficult to, to uh, import and reuse. Uh, last but not the least, uh, this entire solution is based on cloud formation. And without going into the, uh, the details of the language or the uh, uh, well, scripting uh, uh, tool set, right? Um, customers wanted the, to use Terraform because they already have Terraform implemented in their environment and they would like to have um, uh, a, a smoother uh, and seamless uh, integration of database landing zone into what they already uh, been using in their organizations. Okay. So um, without further ado, my name is Eugene Estrati. I'm the CTO and technology partner at Micro Group. Um, I used to work at the, these companies like AWS, uh, Hearst, and Grubhub. Uh, these are my credentials, and uh, I focus um, lately for the last, I would say, five years or more on automation, DevOps, and serverless in, in the enterprise world. And today, I would like to go hands-on with this uh, Terraform module for AWS Landing Zone, and I would like to uh, talk about um, this is basically the agenda, is um, how did we, um, what, what is the under the hood uh, set up for the AWS Landing Zone uh, Terraform module? Uh, how did we structure providers? How do we structure components? Uh, what is the role of uh, TFRs in all this setup? Uh, how to customize or like use a different Terraform backend? And if I'll have time, I'll try to go through a, a light demo of how to use this uh, Terraform module in action. So uh, this is the link, right? Registry.terraform.io. Uh, if you get to the landing zone solution uh, and scroll up a little bit down, you'll have uh, a, an example how to set up and start using it today, right? And the structure is basically two files uh, that are the most important. 
uh, is um, main TF, how do you define the module, how do you call it, and the TF virus files, how do you uh, pass variables into this module, okay? So I'll try to walk through the uh, anatomy of, um, of, of this module, right? So you predefine the source uh, that points to the registry, the public registry. Um, you basically define the variables that are expected by the module is the list of providers and the list of components. Um, it's an optional, you can also define a variable to uh, which backend to be used. And that's pretty much it, right? Now, if we go into the providers, uh, we have an, uh, more or less an unwritten rule that we're using one modules provider per one AWS account plus region, right? So if I go into my definition of the providers uh, variable, uh, this is the structure. I, it is required to have one default provider which matches to your core uh, master account. Uh, and in this provider, you need to pass uh, an account ID and a default region. Uh, the account ID is, uh, again, it's a requirement because uh, we want to make sure that you don't uh, shoot yourself in the foot. Uh, you need to uh, have a hard-coded account. And if you're running Terraform with the different credentials rather than that particular ADB, uh, AWS account, uh, you will uh, get an error saying uh, you're not allowed to run, uh, uh, to execute on this account. Uh, that's a native Terraform functionality, right, for AWS providers. Um, now going, going next, uh, as uh, AWS Lending, solu uh, Lending Zone Solution has a couple of core accounts. Uh, here I just put it one example for the security account and um, uh, the same as uh, for the uh, master account, you need to provide the account ID and default region. Uh, last but not the least, it's very important to remember and keep up uh, is, and I'll point out uh, down the road as well, is that the key names used for provider definition, they are later used as prefixes for variables uh, in this solution. So they are very important to be, um, remember how you define your providers uh, and uh, I'll show later the structure of how do you pass those providers values in the TFVAR files. Now, switching to components, um, why we're not saying just con Terraform configurations and we're calling them components? Uh, because it's, um, we are trying to, come, uh, to uh, uh, help customers and help everybody who is using this module uh, to use kind of like an immutable approach in a microservices architecture um, uh, fashion, right? Um, so basically the Terraform that is defined for every component Usually it's just one Terraform component, uh, one Terraform resource uh, per component. Sometimes it can be uh, two or three, so it can be multiple, but we want to have it as small as possible. Uh, so we can, uh, uh, which kind of uh, one of the core tenants of the microservices architecture, it's fully self-service, it's fully independent, and um, it helps you to be able to connect with other components uh, as well, right? So um, what is the structure of a component? Uh, in a component, you just uh, will, um, uh, first of all, it's an immutable component uh, and we are shifting the focus from the Terraform configuration into Terraform uh, TFVAR file, right? We want to help customers not to worry about how to write those components, but to worry what you passing as a variable into this component that helps you solve this problem easier. Um, and the key value pairs, you have the component name on the left and you have the path to the TFVAR files uh, where it's stored on the right. Uh, the VAR file can be uh, uh, stored locally or it can be remote on S3. It can be uh, one TFVAR file uh, per component or it can have multiples, right? Uh, and again, I here put an example from S3, but the, uh, the same, if it's a local uh, folder, you just put the path to the local folder and you use uh, the asterisk 
uh, to say, find all the TFR files in that particular path. And okay, and now it's the most important aspect uh, to, to, keep, to keep up with is how do you define these TFR files? So um, first, in each of these TFR files, you need to define what provider is actually applied to this particular component. So for example, let's say I have here the component that it's called landing zone VPC. And I want for this component to be uh, run, uh, to be mapped not to all of the providers that I defined earlier that I showed you before, but I want to be defined only for default provider, right? So um, an, an example for that would be uh, for, let's say for my, um, a master account, I want to set up in my master account only AWS organizations. Uh, but in my core account, I actually don't need to set up anything AWS organization related. So in that case, since in my entire solution, in my entire module, I have probably, let's say, 20 uh, providers that I defined. In this particular tier of our file uh, that I associate I put an example as we can see, uh, but uh, right now it would give you an example which makes sense uh, with AWS organizations. I want to say only define, uh, only uh, run that uh, Terraform for my master account, which is default in our case. And I don't need to set up organizations in the core accounts and all the other accounts that I have in my solution. Right? So, let me move forward. So this is where uh, this is very important, how you define the variables uh, in the TFR files. So the first layer you need to, for this particular provider, you put the provider key name and then underscore provider. So in this case is the provider is default. I have default provider. Then are we going a level deeper? You can have multiple components. Here I'm only showing the VPC component landing zone VPC underscore resource. So the component key name underscore resource. And the third one is we, since in the component itself, we use in count, uh, we just put as, a, as an, um, a prefix, we put config and everything else is just, you need to put a zero, one, two, three, so that it can iterate uh, through all of the definitions from the TFR. Last but not the least, what you define inside the config, those are the key value pairs or all of the attributes that you need to pass to the corresponding Terraform resource. In this case is VPC, whatever you find on the terraform.io um, uh, documentation that you need to pass to VPC, you can specify over here. It is dynamically passed to the, the corresponding component uh, that we created for landing zone v VPC. All right, um, I spend a little bit more time here because the structure is important. Now, last but not the least, this is optional, which means by default, uh, we have defined the backend local to go to this path. But if you want to customize that and you want to actually store all of your TF states in an S3 bucket, this is how would you change uh, uh, to, to, to have your all the TF uh, state files in put into a particular S3 bucket, right? In this case, the bucket name is Terraform in the base landing zone. Okay, so uh, moving on, uh, I'll try to demo it. I have two more slides that I'll go through and then I'll jump into the demo. So in summary, I tried to cover here all the providers and how you define them. I tried to talk about components and what is the list of components. Uh, again, this is dynamically generated. Uh, TFR files, and in TFR files, it's important to use the providers that you need for, this partic for a particular component, not to define all of them, but only the ones that you need it, right? Like kind of like you have available providers, in here you have enabled providers for this particular component. 
uh, how to customize the Terraform backend and why is it demo. So this is an open source project. I'll show you the links uh, next. And I just want to call out the contributors. Um, and it's, um, since it's open source, please feel free to go check the code, uh, contribute if you would like. All right. So let me switch to, okay, let me switch my, my uh, UI. Okay, there you go. So uh, the um, uh, module is uh, published on the public registry, Terraform. The way to go here is registry.terraform.io, landing zone. I, you'll see here a couple of modules talking about landing zone. This is for measure. This is the one that we developed. And this is what I showed you in the, in the presentation. If I scroll down, here's how you use the module and here's how you define the parameters that you need to pass into this module, right? Now, let me scroll back here up. Uh, this is the corresponding S3 bucket, uh, sorry, a GitHub repository, which I have it open over here, right? And you can go and you can check all the code you can see the main.tf, how it is used, right? You can see the uh, Terraform, well, it's, a, it's a, a symbolic link. So this is the Terraform, what components we currently have available at this point. Let me see, so we have 80 components, as well as it's keep growing as we get customers asking us for, for more features. Okay, so, uh, all right. Okay, um, sorry, I got distracted by the chat message. I'm coming back and I'll, I'll try to get to the questions at the end, right? Um, and here's how you define providers, right? So we have here the default provider, which corresponds to the core, uh, the master account, sorry. Uh, and then we have three core accounts where you have a security account, logging account, shared services, and then you can add as many accounts as you have in your, in your scenario uh, where you basically extend the, the solution to, uh, to cover all of your accounts just uh, managed by one Terraform module, all right? So uh, to show you how this works, I'll go over here. I have here my Terraform module, okay? And I already prepared some uh, variables uh, that I, I would like to show you, but not everything because I don't want to show my account IDs, right? So uh, you can ignore the first one, but that's basically, uh, I created a custom bucket. This is publicly available, but this is my personal uh, for, for the company which is privately available. Now everyone can access this bucket. And this is the official, what is you see on the documentation, right? And for the sake of this demo to be a little bit faster, I reduced that number of, account, of uh, components that I'm using to a smaller subset of components, but very, very important. Uh, I have VPCs, I have subnets, I have internal gateways, I have route tables, our tables for Internet Gateway, for IPv6, security groups, and everything I am related, roles, policies, and attachments between roles and policies. Okay. I'm not going next to the providers because that's where I have all of my accounts set it up. Right. And I'll start doing basically Terraform and it. Right? So it downloads all the plugins that I'm using here. Terraform plan. All right, in Terraform plan, you can see here the warnings, but that's because I'm using more variables that I actually, def uh, I, I, I define more variables that I use for this demo. So you can ignore them. But here, without going into too many, because before that is the account name, uh, you can see that it takes all the paths to uh, the corresponding paths in S3 for every component that I defined in my components list. All right, and let me start doing Terraform apply. 
Okay, I'll do yes. And this thing will take a couple of minutes. Um, so instead of just staring to the screen and looking for this couple of minutes, I'll, I'll leave it here and I'll go to the questions and then we'll come back to this execution, right? Okay, so the question is, when do you need to require more than one service in a component? Do you have a preferred way of making this clear, either by naming, file structure, or docs? When you're embracing infrastructure as code, are there any particular types of configuration that are bad candidates? Like networking, transit gateways, VPN, DNS setup, etc. It seems like something, sometimes you get into a chicken and egg scenario. Well, <laughs> let me start from the, from the end. Yes, <laughs> sometimes it's like a chicken and egg scenario. Um, let me try to come from the, what solution provides out of the box and then get back to what Terraform module that we are providing to the customers uh, covers and where it's more flexible and where it's a little bit less flexible, right? So um, uh, the landing zone solution from AWS, uh, the CloudFormation version, uh, provides you the core account uh, to, uh, you need to have those accounts already, uh, they need to be, to exist, right? And it helps you to start there. Actually, let me go to the architecture. So I, I don't, I don't, you have a visual. Um, for that, right? So it starts with an AWS organization. It starts with AWS single sign-on. Um, then three major accounts, the shared services, archive and security account. You put everything CloudTrail and config logs into the logging account. You put everything IEM cross account roles, uh, guard duty and some notifications uh, when you have security incidents in the security account. And you put the VPC, the network baseline, you put in the shared account, right? And then everything that you see here, account baseline is, it's up to you. How do you want to set up for your company, for your organization, right? You define where do you want this to be managed on the landing zone level to be consistent across the board. And imagine here, it's not uh, uh, drawn, but you have a list of multiple accounts that you want to vend for your users. And you'll break down them either by um, business unit or by project or by uh, an ecosystem that has multiple projects in it. So you define that structure, how you want this to be managed in your organization. So that's the landing zone solution. Now the Terraform module, the way it has, it's is literally all of these components taking independently like microservices. If I want to have AWS organization, I manage AWS organization. If I don't want to have an AWS organization, I remove the component from the from my list from here, and I'm done. Now <laughs> this, this particular use case doesn't make sense. If you don't have AWS organization, you cannot have a multi-strategy account. It goes everything through, through this service, right? Now, what, what's a good example is, if I don't want to use AWS SSO, I don't have to use AWS SSO. I'm replacing this with whatever I already internally have, and I'm done. So this goes off, and my custom SSO, either it's Active Directory or uh, Okta goes in, in uh, is replacing it, okay? So back to your question, right? Where do you, um, uh, where do you, how do you choose uh, which ones to put in here? What are the bad, bad candidates? So technically, like for example, Transit Gateway. Transit Gateway might be a good, uh, a good uh, candidate to have in the landing zone solution, right? To put it over here because it goes into your networking. And if you are using Transit Gateway as your centralized uh, networking service to, in, to integrate with your uh, on-premises, uh, Direct Connect, 
or maybe AWS VPN uh, to have all of those VPC peering in one place, as well as have multiple uh, accounts uh, integrated with, with each other. So that might be a good, a good uh, example. I saw other customers, they actually have a shared services account separate from the networking account. And they put everything networking related into a separate account and they just connect these to a uh, shared services account and networking account. And in, in our experience, it's because it, uh, there are two different teams that are responsible for that. That's why they, they break it down, right? Now, uh, so naming file structure and documents. The, the naming convention is we usually put everything like landing zone underscore something. Um, and um, uh, this is the component name. So let's say for example, subnet, right? And when I go into, I'll open in a new tab. And when I go into the component list, right? I can find here, oh, I can find here landing zone uh, subnet. And there you go, you click over here and there is a structure. What do we recommend as a default TFR file? Default TFR file, that means it's, it uh, match, matches to the default TFR provider. And we also developed a feature that you can import some of the components. So I, I didn't mention that, but uh, here's the, um, the, the benefit of using uh, this module versus the landing zone uh, cloud formation uh, template is that you can already import existing resources by just running Terraform import, right? And with this uh, .tf import file that we invented, you just put them key value pairs here. Uh, sorry, it's not exactly key value pairs. It's a list of component name, uh, the Terraform uh, uh, slug and the value. Right, uh, and then that allows you to do the import uh, within one profile within one provider. If you put a comma and you put the provider name at the end, that will allow you to do with one command to import all of the resources across all of the providers for this particular component. I hope I'm answering your questions and not deviating too much. Uh, feel free to let me know if uh, you have follow-up questions. So let me go back to the demo and see what's happening. Um, one second. So in theory, it should say that it imported the values. And uh, one second. I don't want to debug it right now, so I can run apply one more time and I can see if that was successful or not. Okay, so the building step is successful. All right, now let's try to see if the apply will, will basically bring us back the, the, um, the resources that have been Technically, they have been already imported. I did it before the demo. Well, I'm actually showing you guys the, the, um, the option for our company, how we manage our internal multi-account strategy uh, for, for, for our company, basically. All right, uh, something is wrong over here. So, inconsistent conditional. Okay, I messed up something. So I apologize, I will not be able to have a successful demo today. Um, I guess if I remove this, this component from my demo, it should work. But anyway, let me pause here. Let me see if there are other questions. And I wanted to have, let's see. I don't see in, in Zoom other questions. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep going to, um, uh, to uh, another repository that we created and we are sharing to, to customers to 
let you um, have this, uh, how it is possible to have an automation um, and to use this in, in, in an automated environment. Uh, so um, we're using uh, a tool set, an automation, an orchestration tool for Terraform, uh, which helps customers to set up um, the Terraform component. Uh, as you can see, we have, as I mentioned earlier, we have like 80 components. And to run 80 components manually for each of them, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty difficult job. It's not impossible, but it's a pretty difficult job, right? That's why we have this tool set that we developed with, that we call TerraHub, uh, which allows you to uh, run Terraform in it, plan a workspace that allows you to have multiple environments, the production environment, testing environment, staging, so that uses Terraform workspace, uh, as well as uh, Terraform apply with, uh, in one command and allow it to run distributedly. And if you, walk through this demo, you will be able to see how you can set this up. Uh, it describes in, in a great level of details uh, how to provide those, how to uh, create those components and, and do everything that you need with those components. Now, I wanted to get my landing zone today uh, to show it uh, in an automation, but I unfortunately lack of time and, and having a combination of uh, being a home dad and working with kids uh, on their homework, um, I, I, I apologize, I, was, I wasn't able to, to get the, this done. But on the other hand, we have here a project uh, that we are managing uh, internally by our team, which would technically do what I wanted to show you as a demo. Very simple, very straightforward. I'll get my de development environment. I'll create a pull request into my testing environment. I have here a minor improvement. Yeah, that's good. So I create the pull request and I'll wait for a couple of seconds. What happens right now is literally GitHub is integrated with code build from AWS. AWS triggers this job execution um, technically the CI CD pipeline, but since for us it's just one step running the, the Terraform automation, uh, it's, um, uh, we skipped the code pipeline and we directly went into code build. The code build will really soon, it needs to show here a check that the execution started. And at the end of that execution, if it fails, I'll have an, uh, and the red X, if it's successful, I'll have a green checkbox. Yep, there you go. You see, right now it uh, tells me that my code build uh, job is, uh, is executing. When it's done, in theory, I should have my um, Terraform uh, run in a dry, out, in a dry run mode. Um, so it basically runs everything up to apply without applying. Uh, and if I do merge of my pull request, it will execute the Terraform execution, uh, Terraform init plan and apply, including the apply. All right. So I wanted to, yep, there you go. Okay. If I open this up, which I don't want to open right now, uh, this, uh, this will basically ask me to log into my AWS account uh, and uh, will, will get me to, the, um, to this particular job and uh, go to the details that uh, I'm not prepared to show them today. All right, let me go back to the chat and see if there are the questions. I don't see any other questions in chat. One second. Let me see if in Slack I have some questions. Sorry, guys, I, I was ignoring Slack for, for, for a while because I had Zoom in front of me. Okay, I'm switching to Slack. Oh, I have a lot of questions here in Slack. All right, let me try to go and read those questions. There are some things- Two questions from uh, David and Darren you've already answered in the chat. 
Oh, okay. All right. Okay, we have a question from Khaled. Uh, can you explain, do the permissions work with the GitHub code build integration? So here's the thing. Um, permissions, if you integrate, if you allow your users in GitHub to open pull requests, then uh, code build will run that uh, uh, pipeline, right? So you basically, you switch the permissioning um, to GitHub instead of putting in the code build. I hope it, uh, the direction is the viewer question is, uh, is that what I understand is. Uh, so basically, if you have users uh, in your uh, uh, version control system that you don't trust them to open pull requests, uh, then, <laughs> right, so make sure that they, they are not allowed to open pull requests. But if they are opening the pull request, the job will be executed in code pipeline, in code build, right? What permissions does GitHub have to, so that it is able to start a code build job? So it's, when you integrate code build with GitHub, you basically go through an, um, uh, an uh, auth 2.0 authentication and code build retains uh, that, uh, that uh, token, right? Uh, it asks you to give you read write access to, uh, to that repository. Um, and I, uh, sorry, I think it asks you to uh, read write request to all of your repositories. You cannot uh, filter it out to a particular repository. I hope that's the nature of your question. If you don't want to give it to the entire organization, but to a particular repository, code build doesn't allow that. That integration, the existing integration between code build and GitHub doesn't allow that. On the other hand, we've, we've managed to uh, do that with, um, yes, it's a lot between the AWS uh, uh, code build service and your GitHub uh, whoever is authenticated uh, with GitHub from AWS, okay? Uh, but we were able to actually do this as an, um, as an application in GitHub. And in the application, uh, when you create this as an application, uh, you are able to filter out what repositories you allow them to, to, to do. So, um, so we were able to, to achieve that. If, if that's the level of permissioning you need to set up for your organization. Okay. All right. Darren, uh, agree with all the above. It's been an open question and seems like there is a blurry line between what infrastructure is called purists think and what the real world does. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I agree with the statement. And honestly, it's, uh, it's up to you. Uh, how much, uh, how comfortable you are uh, to draw that line and where you, uh, you are drawing that line. We saw customers saying, okay, we want the lending zone solution to manage everything in terms of security, so IEM, in terms of VPC, so VPC subnets, uh, routes, uh, gateways, uh, integration, and so on. Um, and um, uh, security groups, right? So everything that is kind of like, if you're thinking of a large organization that InfoSec needs to have a hand on, that's what uh, they put into the lending zone. Everything else outside of that goes into different business units, different teams. Uh, they, they're responsible for what they want to manage for their particular use case, the particular project. David says it has worked well with ABS config rules. Oh, I need to read those a little bit uh, further. Um, okay, so um, I think the back and forth with things like Transit Gateway is there is a back and forth in requesting the attachment, approving attachment. Those situations for me at least are confusing to even reason 
about in declarative infrastructures, infrastructures code like Terraform. I typically do think like this POC in the UI, then make time to think about what could be imported import that and look at uh, what Terraform wants to import, try to write Terraform code to eventually equals out to a zero change, then abstract that Terraform code to a real from scratch and try it. Is that a good approach? Yes. <laughs> That's exactly uh, how most of us are working uh, when you are learning, right? Once you have the experience, um, it, it goes away and you, you, you already start uh, writing directly in Terraform. But for something new, um, and that's exactly the experience that you described when we started working with, uh, with the Transit Gateway. Yeah. It has worked well with AWS config rules and cloud trail, multi-account, multi-region infrastructure code so far. Yes. So David, I completely agree with you. All right. I don't see other questions. Oh, so Eric, let me see if Eric has any questions. So not all things are easy with infrastructure as code too. A lot of times it is easier to leverage a GUI or script. The important thing is putting all those things into SCM so they can be recreated if needed. Yep. Yeah, I guess that was back and forth with, uh, with uh, David. I agree. Uh, any other questions, concerns?